Welcome into Outkick the Show. I am your fearless leader, Clay Travis. I hope all of you are having a fantastic Monday. Wherever you may be across this great country or this great land, I am still reveling in A.J. Brown with the Manus touchdown catch of the year in the NFL and with Derrick Henry walking off against the uh, Baltimore Ravens in overtime. We had a good day of NFL action, a lot of college football stories to get into. Buckle up, a lot of different directions to head, but right off the top here, if you want $1,000 free to wager that you can't lose with, go to fanduel.com slash clay. That's fanduel.com slash clay, and you are going to get hooked up in a way that is better than you can anywhere else. $1,000 you can't lose the first wager. You got to deposit money and you can put up a thousand, up to $1,000 on your first wager and they'll refund you if you lose. You can't lose in that first bet. FanDuel.com slash Clay, Tennessee, Pennsylvania, uh, New Jersey, Indiana, Illinois, Colorado, West Virginia, all of those places, soon to be Michigan as well. As, uh, as the state of Virginia. A lot to dive into, a lot to be excited about. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure that we are hitting on all of these. All right, right off the top, three, I thought, big games in the NFL that gave us a larger sense of where we are headed as we prepare for tonight's game between the Rams and the Bucks. By the way, I like the Rams plus the points tonight against the Bucks in Monday Night Football a really, really big Monday night football game uh, for that manner, by the way. Uh, Chiefs Raiders. The Chiefs, what an unbelievable drive by Patrick Mahomes to win this game. Elite level quarterbacks, if you give them time, they don't go try to get a field goal. They go try to win the football game and the Chiefs made it happen. The Raiders played well. They match up well, I think, in the grand scheme of things with the Chiefs. But in the grand scheme of things, there's only one Patrick Mahomes. There is a reason the Chiefs should be favored to repeat as Super Bowl champions. And I thought that was a major statement for the Chiefs to effectively wipe out the one loss they have had so far this season. How about the Packers and the Colts? Packers get up 28-14 at the half, only score three points in the second half. Colts find a way to win. I think the Colts will beat the Titans on Sunday and take command in the AFC South because the Colts have won 19 of the last 23 against the Titans and the Titans can't get any pressure on Phillip Rivers at all. They have no pass rush and if you can't rush Phillip Rivers, he'll stand in the pocket and pick you apart all day. Uh, In terms of the Titans though, huge win on the road against the Ravens. Like I mentioned, the A.J. Brown man reception bowling into the end zone for a touchdown. How about Derrick Henry with the walk-off run? And big picture here for the Ravens as you go forward. How about Lamar Jackson is just 6-5 and five in his last 11 starts? He's lost to the Titans twice. He's lost to the Chiefs. He's lost to the Steelers. And now he has lost to the Patriots as well. Is the magic off of Lamar Jackson? Is he coming back down to earth after superstar MVP season last year? I think you could make an argument that the answer is yes, that defenses have caught up with what the Ravens do on offense and Lamar Jackson is just a good, just a good quarterback, not a transcendent difference-making quarterback like a Patrick Mahomes or an Aaron Rodgers or a Russell Wilson. Just a decent quarterback in the NFL and it seems like it does indeed appear that the NFL defenses have caught up with him. Now, A couple of other big stories that came out of the NFL. Joe Burrow, severe injury. And uh, I wrote this down. We'll talk with Pro Football Doc tomorrow on the radio program. Uh, But the injury, pretty severe. Uh, Joe Burrow tore his ACL, his MCL, and suffered other structural issues in his knee. It was an ugly video if you saw it. The Bengals going out and losing uh, losing their, their signal caller. Really tough to watch. I hope Joe Burrow comes back healthy. Uh, It's hard not to root for him. He's a lot of fun to watch play. Uh, Also, uh, that basically solidifies who's going to be the rookie of the year. It's Justin Herbert who had another incredible performance in the passing game. Justin Herbert may be the best quarterback as a rookie in the NFL 
relative to what I expected to see from him as a rookie in the NFL. So much better than he was in college football. Tua got benched, uh, which was a fairly significant story as well. Uh, And the NFC East remains a debacle. Right now, the Dallas Cowboys 15th in the NFC, tied for the worst record alongside of the Atlanta Falcons. They're a half game out of hosting a home playoff game and winning the NFC East. We got to do away with this idea that you get to host a home playoff game uh, if you are able to uh, to have success uh, there. It just makes absolutely no sense that a division winner in as bad of a division as the NFC East would make uh, this situation and this decision. All right, uh, college football. We now have narrowed down, I believe, the number of teams that are capable of making the college football playoff. We got Alabama as a one seed, Ohio State, Uh, as the two seed Uh, Clemson as the three and Notre Dame as the four that's my prediction of what's going to happen but we also have the Florida Gators the Texas A&M Aggies and also maybe a Pac-12 champ and maybe Cincinnati and BYU now BYU is getting criticized right now for not immediately accepting an offer from Washington but I think you have to take a step back BYU deserves a lot of credit for being willing to play football when everybody else was saying we're not playing this season. They remade their entire football schedule on the fly, BYU did. Nobody else in the Mountain Time Zone, nobody else on the West Coast was going to play. And BYU stepped up and said, we're going to get this done. I think you have to give a lot of credit to those guys. I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt even though they were getting raked over the coals over this Washington situation. But ultimately, I think it's going to come down to Uh, the six teams that I mentioned that I think are squarely in the mix Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, Notre Dame, Florida and Texas A&M I think four of those six will go Pac-12 champ if it's USC or Oregon maybe they're on the outside looking in Cincinnati or uh, BYU if they were to play at the end of the year and be able to put together enough of a profile overall maybe possibly there is something to be built out of that but it's going to be a challenge I think for anybody other than those teams I just all named to be able to get into the college football playoff pictures. Want to give props to Notre Dame? All the Corona bros out there said, oh my God, after Notre Dame fans stormed the field to celebrate the double overtime win over Clemson, what did all the Corona bros say? Oh my God, Notre Dame season is over. They're going to have so many different cases. Not true. Notre Dame football just released their most recent testing data. They've got no cases. Now, they do have a challenging game on Friday against North Carolina and Mac Brown is laying there in wait with a chance to get a major signature win for his program. Remember last year they almost beat Clemson at UNC. Friday football game against Notre Dame. Notre Dame only around a four-point favorite in that one. That line kind of shocked me. Uh, we're talking about the players that are in the mix and the teams that are in the mix to make the college football playoff. How about Kyle Trask? Kyle Trask took a solid control of the Heisman race with uh, with the poor performance by Justin Fields, with Mac Jones just being okay and with Trevor Lawrence not able to play, which we'll get to in a moment. How about Kyle Trask coming out of nowhere since the Felipe Franks injury? He hadn't started a game since high school and now he is on track to potentially win the Heisman Trophy this year. I think he's going to win the Heisman Trophy. And I think he's going to have a big enough lead that unless he has a disastrous game against Alabama in the SEC championship game, I believe that he will find himself as a substantial favorite unless he goes out and throws five interceptions and just plays atrocious. I believe he's going to be your Heisman Trophy winner this year. Now, a couple of other things that uh, that are out there. Florida State and Clemson are battling in public. Mike Norvell, Florida State football coach, fired back at Dabo Sweeney. Dabo came out and said, look, we had one asymptomatic positive backup offensive lineman who was uh, who was identified and was not going to play three hours before the game is set to be played. The ACC is fine with it going on. FSU says no. And so as a result, are they actually going to play this game? Now, This is different than what has happened many other games that have been canceled days in advance. I'm not aware of any major college football game or any major sport in general that has been canceled on the day of the game after some people from the team have already gone to the football stadium to get ready for that game. 
Uh, what we have to do, and we still haven't been able to do it even as we approach Thanksgiving, is behave rationally in regards to this virus and what restrictions there are to put in place. Guys, I don't know if you saw this, but the state of Pennsylvania has announced an alcohol sales restriction uh, beginning on Wednesday going all the way through Thanksgiving. I don't know what in the world they are trying to uh, actually manage with this alcohol sales restriction. The city of LA shut down all restaurant dining. That's despite the fact that many restaurants in LA spent tons of money to try to set up outdoor seating areas so they could remain viable. So not only has LA shut down all indoor dining, but after allowing all of these struggling businesses to spend tons of money on outdoor seating options, now the city of Los Angeles has shut down everything. This is madness. This is COVID hysteria run amok. None of it makes sense from a logical perspective. This is what I told you from the get-go. Everybody is competing to try to be the most anti-COVID politician on the planet. And as a result, they're making all sorts of irrational decisions that are not supported in any way by basic logical fact or truth. This is a major, major issue, I believe, going forward. And the fact that we have politicians behaving in such ignorant and insanely dumb uh, ways is, to me, a real major issue in the country that is not getting resolved in any way. In fact, arguably, it's getting worse. Speaking of getting worse, Tennessee is around an 11-point favorite this weekend against Vanderbilt uh, in the game on Saturday. Tennessee has lost five straight games by double digits under Jeremy Pruitt. Thanks in no small measure to Jarrett Garantano being unable to avoid throwing pick sixes. I honestly think if Tennessee comes out and pretty much runs the ball on every play against uh, Auburn in the second half on Saturday, I think they might have won the football game. Auburn couldn't stop the Tennessee rush attack. Instead, Tennessee goes down to Auburn, throws a pick six when it appears they're about to take the lead, collapses, and now you've got Vanderbilt, uh, Tennessee does, on the road, a winless Vanderbilt team, and they're a big favorite here. But I think Tennessee, if they were smart, has to start to ask some questions about the future of Jeremy Pruitt at Tennessee. In particular, is he the guy, particularly because Hugh Freeze is out there for the taking? Now, what exactly South Carolina ends up doing, I think, is an interesting question. But if Hugh Freeze is going to come back into the SEC and play against you every year, Do you feel like at this point you've seen enough to suggest that Jeremy Pruitt is capable of winning titles at Tennessee? I think by year three, you know if the guy is right or not. And to me, it seems pretty self-evident that Jeremy Pruitt is not given enough evidence, has not given enough evidence that he's the right guy. So if I were in charge at Tennessee right now, certainly if Tennessee loses to Vanderbilt, but even if Tennessee beats Vanderbilt and finishes three and seven, it goes 1-7 in seven down the stretch with Jeremy Pruitt in the SEC. Is that a performance that instills a lot of reason for optimism? Not to me. And so I question if Hugh Freeze is available. Do you not have to go and get Hugh Freeze to be your guy going forward? I think you certainly have to contemplate it uh, because I have not seen anything that makes me believe that Jeremy Pruitt is going to change the trajectory of the Tennessee football program any more than he already has. In fact, quite the opposite. Uh, Final thought, the Ravens, J.K. Dobbins, and Mark Ingram have both tested positive for COVID. That's a big deal because right now the Ravens are scheduled to play against the Steelers on Thursday. I still think you try to get that game in on Thursday. Maybe you could bump it to uh, Sunday. Worst case scenario. Uh, But it is a uh, story worth monitoring. Again, the Ravens coming out of an overtime loss to Tennessee and having a couple of guys test positive. A couple of other big stories. Taysom Hill started over Jameis Winston. Did you see the tweet that uh, that you got sent from Sean Payton uh, going after guys who said that they were going to be awful if they started Taysom Hill? I don't know if Taysom Hill is Tim Tebow 2.0. I don't know what his long-range future is going to be as a starting quarterback in the NFL. But that debut, a 24-9 win over the Atlanta Falcons, was pretty impressive for Taysom Hill. And Sean Payton took a lot of risk not putting in Jameis Winston and they got the win and did it no matter what. Uh, And so I thought that was pretty impressive overall 
Taysom Hill's performance. Maybe he is the quarterback of the future as Drew Brees deals with 11 different fractures in his rib cages. Uh, finally, Reese Davis. Reese Davis, did you see where Joey Galloway at ESPN said that he didn't think Northwestern was going to beat Wisconsin because they had a bunch of Reese Davises on the field? If you haven't seen the video that Northwestern put out uh, calling themselves the Fighting Reese Davises, it is pretty fantastic. But it's also interesting what Joey Galloway was able to get away with, which is, let's be honest, blatant racism, okay? But I thought the way that Northwestern responded to this represents everything that's right about the way that you can respond when you are denigrated. First of all, the Northwestern players all had fantastic senses of humor about it. And the video that they put out, which maybe we can embed here uh, as a part of this video, 54 seconds of the team all standing around and making fun, basically, of Joey Galloway. Northwestern now 5-0. They basically won the Big Ten West Uh, by shutting down the Wisconsin offense. This Northwestern defense under Pat Fitzgerald looks to be the truth. And it's hard not to root for these guys after you watch the video. The truth, as always, humor is a far better uh, method by which to analyze things than, uh, than perpetually being aggrieved and offended and curling up in the fetal position. Embrace humor anytime you have an opportunity to do so and you tend to win uh, over time. I appreciate all of you. My name is Clay Travis. DBAP unless you need to SBAP. I'll be on television at Fox Bet Live at 5 Eastern, 4 Central, 3 Mountain, 2 Pacific. I think that you guys will absolutely enjoy what is coming your way there. Uh, I appreciate all of you and props to Derrick Henry for the walk-off against the Baltimore Ravens after several tough losses to the Baltimore Ravens over the years. I can't tell you how sweet the playoff win was in conjunction with this regular season win. It was, for this Titans fan, a lot of fun to watch and helped to uh, salve the wounds over the years of poor performances against the Ravens. Uh, Appreciate all of you. My name is Clay Travis. This has been Outkick the Show. DBAP, unless you need to SBAP, I will be live on the radio tomorrow and on Wednesday for the holiday week. Headed down to the beach with my family for Thanksgiving. Should be an awesome time down there. Can't wait. Appreciate all of you supporting OutKick. Go to FanDuel.com slash Clay. Thousand dollar free roll. Tennessee for sure. Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, Colorado, West Virginia, and soon to be Michigan and Virginia. If you're watching this in Michigan and Virginia, go sign up now. They'll let you know the first moment that you can place legal sports wagers in your state. And if you are traveling into Tennessee and you haven't been here before, download the app $1,000 free to gamble with for the holiday weekend. Appreciate all of you. My name is Clay Travis. This has been Outkick the Show. Kisses. I'll see you guys tomorrow.